What's happening everybody? It's Trey here, joined again by my dad Sean. And today, reaction to the classics, we got a really fun one for you. Band on the Run by Paul McCartney and Wings. We were actually familiar with a few of the tracks yes. because we were lucky enough to see Paul perform earlier this year, uh, three of them. So, yeah. But besides that, we weren't familiar with any of the other tracks on here. And if this is your first time stopping by the channel, we appreciate it. Your reactions to the classics, we take a look back at some of the most classic records of all time, do a detailed track-by-track -track review. It's usually the first time we've heard the record. So that sounds like something interesting to you. Be sure to hit that big red subscribe button. And if you'd like to link up with us more, we got our... Our Facebook group as well as our patreon where you can support the channel get exclusive content and uh, all that to say let's just get into the quick facts yeah this is his uh, third studio album with wings his fifth studio album since leaving the Beatles came out in December of 1973 the last album he had to produce for Apple core it was the number one selling album in Canada and Australia of 1974, number two in the UK. We'll put Paul back on the map critically as it was very well received. The majority of this album was recorded at EMI Studios in Lagos, Nigeria. Paul wanted to go to an exotic locale. He had no idea. Mm -hmm. This is before we had all this information we get at, the, at our fingertips. He had no idea that, you know, Nigeria was not the place <laughs> to go because they'd been in a civil war in 1970 and there's a bunch of disease and military control. So Paul, Linda, and Denny Lane, that was all that was left of mm -hmm. the of the wings there were two other the guitarist and the drummer left right before, mm -hmm. the week right before they left so they head off to nigeria to record this album yeah and it didn't go splendid because the studio was not in the shape that they wanted no. it to be they were unfortunately robbed at knife point and in that robbing they took a bag that had unfinished lyrics had some demos demo some there. of the songs they recreated <laughs> including the title track by memory so yeah that's just insane and here, Paul kind of throws it back to the McCartney self-titled because he plays drums on a lot of these tracks. Of course, he plays bass, some fantastic bass lines throughout, as well as lead guitar on the majority of these tracks. So he has his hands all over this. And uh, after they spent time in Nigeria, they went back to London to put in overdubs and pretty up the record. Yeah, they actually went to George Martin's studio to do that. As far as what the album's about, Paul himself said, it's a collection of songs and the basic idea about the band on the run is kind of a prison escape. At the beginning of the album, the guy's stuck inside four walls and breaks out. There's a thread, but not a concept. And many people believe this was right at the time where the other three original Beatles, Beatles John, Ringo, and George, mm -hmm. sued Alan Klein, broke from him. We're not going to relive that whole story, but that's what caused Paul eventually to be on the outs with the other three. They kind of came back together and had a much better relationship, and some people believe that gave him that creative burst for this album. Yeah, and one final note before we get into the songs, the track, the single Helen Wheels, yes. was not on the UK version, but Capital, to garner up some interest in the States here, wanted to put it on the record. Paul eventually agreed, so we're going to cover it in this review, and we're just going to get rocking with the opening song, the title track, Band on the Run. Wow, I mean, I knew this song, as I said, we saw him play yeah. it in concert. It reminds me a lot of Happiness is a Warm Gun because it does. it's a three-part medley. And the segues in here are fantastic. And it, it was a single. They ended up cutting out the second funky type part. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. But might be my favorite I, I know. part of the entire song, but... This uh, starts that theme of freedom, of escape, of, you know, the band on the run. Yeah, the single went to number one in the U.S., selling over a million copies, three in the U.K., and it actually won the Grammy for Best Pop Vocal Performance by a group. First section's kind of a slow ballad. The second part, as you mentioned, is the funk rock, and the third is kind of country-esque. The lyrics of the entire song are related. Based on a general theme, as you mentioned, Trey, of freedom and escape, Paula said numerous times it was partly inspired by a comment that George Harrison had made during a meeting of the Beatles' Apple Corps record list. And John Lennon, I guess maybe Trey, since they just come back together yeah. as sort of friends, he actually praised this song and the album as a whole. And if you follow our reviews or know anything <laughs> about the Beatles, John praising Paul's work or even his own oftentimes is a rare thing. Yeah, it's definitely a rare occurrence. And man, I know some people put maybe I'm amazed as their favorite Paul solo song. This has got to be it for me, Band on the Run. I it, It's a journey, man. Oh, absolutely. I, I just keep replaying it over and over. One of my favorite songs and it stands up to a lot of his Beatles work in my opinion as well. I agree. And that takes us to the second song, which was also a single, Jet. Now, this was named after a Labrador retriever that, that he had, 
but it's not about the dog. Yeah. Uh, for a little while, he said it was about a pony he once had. Then he also <laughs> said just a few years ago, it was about meeting Linda's dad for the first mm -hmm. time, that he was kind of intimidating. And you know, there's a little bit of lyrics in there where maybe you can see that there's not a lot to lyrics yeah. here, but I woke up this morning hearing <laughs> Jack. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> it's got so, a bit of a, it's very punchy, energetic, has an anthem. Yes, exactly. And that's kind of what it's about. It's about the anthem and not really about the lyrics. Yeah, and it has a very fuzzy guitar work in yes. here. Uh, the backing vocals, uh, where I thought on Ram were sometimes a little over the top. I thought throughout this whole record and this song specifically, it uh, just added the right amount of punch to the song as opposed to being a little over the top. Yeah, and I thought Paul's vocal performance is very oh, strong yeah. as well. And that takes us to Bluebirds. Credit to Paul and Wind on songwriting. Saxophone solo was fantastic on here credited to Howie Casey there's also acoustic guitars kind of a calypso like percussion sung by McCartney with Linda and Denny Lane also providing harmony so a definite difference in this song mm -hmm. from the previous two yeah it keeps that flying or freedom motif yeah. uh, the guy mentions when he kisses his lover they're like bluebirds and they got the freedom of love uh, this one grew on me more than really any of the other ones on the record nice percussion Great melody. It, it, it is very uh, relaxing and it is a, a sweet song. Not one of my favorites per se. No, but, it's middle of the road for me, but, but it's not bad. I appreciated it for what it was. And then we're going to go on to Mrs. Vanderbilt. Opening lines are actually taken from the English music hall performer Charlie Chester. We got Casey again with the sax solo. And we got a line in here, what's the use of worrying? Goes on to say, what's the use of hurrying? What's the use of anything? Bass line here was next level. I really enjoyed that. It had an urban feel to it me. It did. Um, I, I enjoyed it. You had the hey-ho type of lyrics in here. So Yeah, for me, it was also middle of the road for the album. Not a bad song and definitely mm -hmm. different musical yeah. uh, styles in these first four songs. So I did enjoy that as well. And then we're going to come to a song that we were fortunate enough to see him perform in concert, Let Me Roll It. Mm -hmm. And this one, he's talking about his heart, his love. Yeah, and the song's title was inspired by a quote from Harrison's I'd Have You Any Time, the opening track off his fantastic All Things Must Pass, which, look in our past videos, we actually reviewed that one. And a lot of critics see it as trying to simulate or emulate Lennon sound. And when McCartney was asked about it, he goes, you know, it really does sound like that. I wasn't trying to do that. For me, I like this song. I think the mixing on this song, there's a couple of these songs where the mixing, I'm not a big fan of. It's a little muddy, it's a little distorted, I don't think intentionally, but you know, you mentioned it in the, at the start, the ones they did in Nigeria, they were really dealing with antiquated equipment. They shipped <laughs> yeah, some of their own exactly. in eventually, but it's pretty di difficult. No, this is one of my favorites on the record. Yeah. Essentially here he's talking about his heart is like a wheel and he wants to roll it to his love. We got an organ in there. That electric guitar riff is just uh, you know contagious. I, I thought it was a great way to end out the A side. We started it with Band on the Run, it ended it with yeah. this. Mamonia is gonna start off the B side. This was written in Nigeria in 73, inspired by the hotel that they were staying yes. at. It means safe haven in Arabic. Again, we have that sense of freedom and that loose theme that runs throughout this entire record. What I enjoyed about this was just the, the lyricism of it. He talks about the rain's going to come and fall. Yeah, the rain uses a metaphor for the hard times. Exactly. It, exactly. And it's not only falling on you, but it's falling on him as well. Everybody's going to go through the, the rain or the trials, but he talks about ultimately it causes seeds to grow and it really grows you as people whenever you come up against those tough times. I thought it was a nice warm track and even had an oddly happy... Uh, know kind of melody and vibe to it <laughs> it did a nice chilled like i thought it was a little long for me it's four minutes and 50 mm -hmm. seconds but i thought it was good and i think the message of the song is to focus on your safe haven and not focus on the rain or the yeah. difficult times which is a great message for all of us I thought the lyrics were fantastic with that overall message and some people see some similarities between that and the beatles linen pinned rain and so mm -hmm. i thought that was interesting as well that's going to take us to no words which was written by paul and denny lane it was actually written before the release of wing's second album red rose Speedway. And the vocals primarily are just Wayne, Paul, and Linda all together. And then Denny Wayne actually gets a verse in there that he mm -hmm. gets to sing, and Paul sings another one. So for me, it's a short song. 
I dug it though. I, I thought it had some nice charm to it. Good explosive guitar at the end. Don't have too much more to add. Yeah. And then when we look at the American version, we got Helen Wheels next. As I mentioned, this was a single later added by Capital to the United States version. This was named after Paul and Linda's Land Rover, which was nicknamed Hell on Wheels. And McCartney said that the song starts off in Glasgow, moves all the way through the English side, at pretty much the route where they would come down from their Scottish farm to London. I thought this, again, was a solid track. Again, the backing vocals had just the right amount of charm to it. And this is right up Paul's wheelhouse, kind of a happy-go-lucky tune. Yeah, I thought his voice sounded a little different on this. And he does this on a couple of the songs just because he can. If you're familiar with the Beatles' work, which I imagine you're going to be watching this video if you weren't, <laughs> uh, he does that on, on their songs as well at times. So for me, it's a pretty good track. It's interesting to me this was the first single they released. Mm -hmm. They released it two months before the album came out. Uh, and as you mentioned, it's not even on the UK album, but uh, interesting that that's what they use to draw up interest when you have a couple other like outstanding yeah, gems on here. But, point. you know, that takes us to a song that is not an outstanding <laughs> gem in my book, Picasso's Last Words, parentheses, Drink to Me. Now, here's the story behind this. Mm -hmm. If you believe Paul, and you know, Paul changes his story on things. We're very familiar with this. This sounds like a great story. It's probably true, guys, but it, it sounds like a little bit of a story to me too. But it's the longest song on this album, which is unfortunate because I don't think it's a very good song. No, if you love uh, it. It definitely could have been cut by like two minutes. Yeah. So Paul says that him and Linda were on vacation. They sneak onto the set of Papillon, which is a famous movie with Dustin Hoffman and Steve McQueen. Later on that night, him and Linda go out with Hoffman and his wife at the time to dinner. And then after dinner, Paul picks up a guitar and he starts mm -hmm. strumming it. And Hoffman tells him something of the nature of, I bet you can't write a song mm -hmm. about just anything. And, and Paul, of course, said, oh yeah, I can. And so he opens up a magazine, Hoffman does, and says, here's the thing about Picasso's last night. And so Paul uh, then produced this. And Paul says that Hoffman then said to his wife, look, look, he's doing it. He's doing it. I don't know, man, but that would maybe explain why the song is just it's just a throwaway, guys. It just is, and it's fine. I mean, I don't hate it, but I would never listen to it again. Yeah, I, I'm with you. This would be my least favorite, but I guess I think this is Paul flexing a little bit, saying, yeah. hey, I can, I write, can do it. I can write a song about anything. You had a funky French interlude in there which yes. i wasn't a fan of then he had a little uh, interpol of jet in there which kept the common theme of uh, yeah. the record a bit and mrs vanderbilt so i appreciated it for that but all in all not a huge fan but then we move on to the final track one that's really good one that shows mccartney's big passion 1985 yes. we also saw him perform this live as well and paul's playing piano here just very electric upbeat it, yeah. this song more than almost any others and i mean this album as a whole still has a modern flair to it i agree it doesn't sound dated at all and maybe you know it, there, there's a mellotron in there maybe that's what added to that a little bit but i really enjoyed this one and at the end there's a, a cool little easter egg yeah part of band on the run is in the chorus of it mm -hmm. kind of quietly fades in and out and I thought the instrumentation at the very end, especially, there's this big orchestra yeah. finish that just was a fantastic way to kind of cap off the album. That brings us to our favorite tracks. Trey, for me, obviously, Band on the Run, the title track, in my opinion, as you said, Paul's greatest work as a solo artist. I know he's with Wings, guys, but you know, as, as a non Beatles mm -hmm. artist, I think that's by far his greatest work. I like the last song, 1985, and also Let Me Roll It. Yeah, the, uh, those would be up there uh, along with Jet. I thought that was pretty darn good as well. And that'll take us to our overall score of the record. For me, this is my favorite McCartney, you know, solo oh, without question. record that we've heard uh, thus far. I liked it better than Ram. I know oh, that's yeah. some people's favorites, but uh, I'm going to be in the 8.5, 8.75 range. I thought it's pretty darn consistent and uh, has some classics to boot on it. Ten songs, very concise, wasn't overproduced, had a lot of great production, and Paul's voice was at the top of his game. Trey, you said it better than I could, so I'm just not really going to say much after that. I agree 100%. I give it an 8.5. I was very pleased to hear this one. Oh, absolutely. Let us know what you think of Band on the Run in the comments section below. As always, Dad, appreciate the research. We'll have more uh, McCartney. We might throw it back to Red Rose Speedway, um, go to some earlier wing stuff. But uh, uh, until next time, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Happy listening, my friends, and we will see you.